What's up, fellas and ladies who are Dolphin fans and, uh, what? So, uh, since I made my video, when was it, Friday, I think, or Thursday or Friday, some things have happened over the weekend. Like I said, I'd make one today, put it out, let you guys know what's happened, my thoughts on it, and what I like to call free agency reaction. So, there's a bunch of things that happened. If you don't know what has happened so far, Go back, watch my last two videos. I think I gave a brief, brief, I got a brief, I gave a brief rundown of what has happened so far with the Dolphins. So some things have happened since then. Um, one of the things that happened is they re-signed Hayes, the defensive end slash defensive tackle. I don't, I think he's going to play defensive end, but now that Sue's gone, he could play tackle, which is really nice. It's not huge because he's old. I think he's in his 30s, but it's really nice because he played with Robert Quinn, who we got from the Rams. They played really well together. So if Robert Quinn is 100%, Hayes is 100%, you put them on the same line, improvement from last year? I don't know. We'll find out. Another big thing. Oh my God, this was huge. They re-signed Denny, the long snapper for the Dolphins. This guy's been with the team for, I think, 14 years now. He's like around 40, but still, he's been with the Dolphins forever. Cool to get this guy back on the team. Like the move. now. There was a huge um, offensive line shakeup. If you can't tell from the title, Mike Pouncey has been cut. Now, a lot of people are happy about that. There's a few people that are unhappy about that. Um, I understand why they did it. So essentially, I'm gonna pick my nose. Boop. I'm gonna tell you why they did it. They asked Pouncey to take a pay cut. I think he was due like nine million or something. Um, he, he couldn't play full practices. He has bad hips. He did his full 16 games last year. Super pumped about that, but his play was up and down throughout all of last season. So they were wanting him to take a pay cut. He said no. Um, so they cut him. So the reason why they cut him and the reason why they took, told him to take a pay cut is because they traded with the 49ers to take their center. I think we just swapped seventh round pick. So it was like no big deal. So we get the 49ers center, Daniel Kilgore, who the 49ers signed last year to an extension. Why this is a big deal is because, let me look at my numbers, the contract that the Dolphins have him under is only gonna pay him 5.3 million this year. It's still like a four or five million dollar savings from Mike Pouncey. They're also gonna be paying him 2.7 million next year and 3.6 million the year after. So we can draft a center and have him build up behind Kilgore, or we could draft a center. If he builds out, beats out Kilgore, we still have depth at that position. And of course, they did what I was hoping they were doing. They had Sitton, Sitton, I'm gonna call him Sitton, in the building, they signed his ass to a two-year, 18 million, eight million guaranteed contract, which is nice, four million. He's going to be playing left guard because he said, and I quote, uh, it's like wiping your ass with the other hand, switching sides. He wanted to play left guard, the, they asked him, would you play right guard? He said he would play right guard, but he's been playing left guard his whole career. And again, it's like saying you've been wiping your ass with your right hand the whole time to go to the other side. It's like wiping your ass with the other side. It's weird. I like him. He's a no bullshitter. And he also said he'll help Tensel on the left side. I like the move. Now, right now what is happening is they have someone in the building. DeMarco Murray. Sign him. Hopefully not. Don't sign him to too much. He's, what, 30 now? Um, he still can, he's a really good pass blocker. So you could put him in on third downs. He's a good complimentary back to Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake is the speedster. DeMarco Murray is the bull. Or could be the bull. I hope they sign him. I like this move. In a nutshell, I like what the Dolphins have done in free agency so far. The wants that I've wanted them to do so far haven't happened. Eric Ebron is still a free agent. Maybe they'll sign him. They need a starting tight end. Uh, they need So far, they need a starting tight end, defensive tackle, linebacker, our needs, and a backup quarterback. That's what they need right now. They don't have a starting tight end. They don't have a starting defensive tackle. And I don't think they have a starting left outside linebacker. They need to have those signed before the draft so then they can do best player available or Baker Mayfield. But the Jets just traded up to third, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know. This might help the Dolphins because quarterbacks might go off the board real quick. And then the Dolphins could possibly take best player available, which is going to be a really good defensive player. Or they could trade back and get more picks. I don't know what's happening, 
But Zach Brown re-signed with the Redskins. That didn't happen that I wanted to happen. They did sign uh, Sinton, so that happened. I'm happy, and they still need a backup quarterback, possibly Baker Mayfield. So, so far, uh, good things have happened. I like what they've done in free agency so far. I like getting the players out that have either ate up a lot of cap space, a.k.a. Sue, or just weren't buying into the program. You have to have a, you know, unity in this locker room or you're just not going to go anywhere. I know I'm a Dolphins fan and I hate the Patriots, but look at what the Patriots have done over the years. They've brought in players that want to be with this team that have bought into the system. You know, they didn't bring in, like, when they brought in Divas, they've changed. Look what the, Randy Moss came in and he became a different player. That's what Adam Gase is trying to do with this team. I know a lot of people are like, they're, they said they want to do culture, but they actually just want to da da da. I, you know, I believe it and I see it because I see who the players that are leaving and I see the players that they're bringing in. They want a locker room united and they need guys to take the locker room. Like, Singh is probably going to be one of the front guys on this offensive line to take charge. If they bring in DeMarco Murray, which would be cool, he is known as a leader in that locker room. Do this. Help this team. Be competitive next year. Look, the Dolphins went, what, 6-10 and 10 last year. If they go 8-8, eight and 9-7 eight, and seven next year, I'll be happy. It's progress. You went 10-6 and six to 6-10 six and 10 to 9-7, and seven, I'll be happy. 8-8, eight and eight, I'll be happy. Any progress, I'll be happy. Um, do I expect them to make the playoffs? I don't know. I'll let you know come week 5 to see what the landscape of the NFL looks like because there's a ton of teams and players and stuff that could change the aspect. Tom Brady can blow his ACL out again and all of a sudden the AFC East is wide open, you know? You don't know what the season entails. They're probably gonna come out with the schedule maybe in like two, three weeks. They always like to put the schedule up before um, the draft and then you have NFL Network and ESPN like predicting schedules. If I go back, I can show you that they're all wrong. They had the Patriots going 16 and 0. Dolphins beat them, beat their ass in Miami. So it's too early to predict the hot teams and it's too early to predict Super Bowl players, Super Bowl teams, too early to predict all that shit. But so far in free agency, I like what the Dolphins have done. They still have a buttload of money left over, even with the dead money that Stu is going to be eating. I think they still have about $20 million in cap space. They only need about three more starters and then they can just start building up either through the draft or pick up some players to be depth. I like what they're doing so far. If there's any more big signings or something, um, I'll make a video. I'll talk about it. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Doug Lee Durong, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I like to repost some of Omar Kelly's stuff. I like Adam Beasley. Uh, I like to follow Ar Armando. I follow all the Dolphin Beat writers so I can get my information and then see where it's going. And I retweet it and I'll tweet out stuff. So follow me. Follow me on Instagram too, Dougie Durong. Follow my second channel, The Bit Boys, youtube.com slash bitboys. We play video games. Have fun over there. Follow us. In the meantime, I will see you guys next time something big happens. I also see you guys after the draft. I will see you guys before the draft. I will do some research and see who I want the Dolphins to get draft wise. But until then, fins up. And see you later. And didn't do great till last year where he was on a contract year. Players tend to play harder on a contract year because they want money. But I don't mind this move because we get Albert Wilson, who signed a three-year, twenty-four million. So if he, if it's fully guaranteed, which it normally isn't, he gets eight million a year.